All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be completing one of my favorite daily quests, the Play 40 Lands quest, and what better way to do it than with some Momia. Uh, is, I'm actually just playing Momia, there's no actual reason for it, the Lands thing. It's kind of irrelevant, but uh, here we are. Uh, we've played Momia on the channel before, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but basically... Uh, you have this little emblem which says pay X and discard a card and then you create a token that is a random copy of a creature with mana value X. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. You'll get the general idea of how this format works in just one game. So if you're a little bit confused by this card, don't you worry. I'll uh, I'll let you know how it works and what to do uh, for the most part at least. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kind of excited to check out Momia since we've got digital only cards now. That's going to be interesting. There's a lot of uh, seek cards from your uh, from your library that are no longer going to work. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what happens. If you do enjoy the content anyway, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get our three wins. By the way, two rares and a cosmetic. You should always do these. They're completely free to enter, and those two rares could be a rare that you needed or twenty gems. In my case, most of the time. Let's go. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty then, we're in, and this looks like a keepable hand. Thank god that we're forced to keep it. Let's play land and say go. I never do Momia on turn one. Uh, there are a couple of mana dorks on turn one, but uh, not enough of them. But I do like to go on turn two, because you do get a lot of mana dorks on turn two, and accelerating your mana is kind of like the biggest cheat in this game. Look at that, add one mana of this creature's colours. So next turn we can actually make four drops instead of our opponent, which is doing two drops right now, so we can get ahead of them on that. Want to try and get one of every color of mana in play as well, because activated abilities are a thing. So let's go for a Ravitus Chupacabra. Maybe? Maybe? Huh? A Mangara. That's actually huge. Uh, not only does that produce mana for us, since it's a human and that's what Catilda does, uh, which means we're accelerating there. It's a mana rock. Uh, but also... If our opponent attacks me with multiple creatures, I'm going to get a benefit from that as well. So now I'm going up to six. Our opponent probably will concede any time around now, since we're at six drops. We've got whenever an artifact creature you control deals combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one -one Thopter. All right, so it only includes itself on that. But it's still pretty good. Ooh, Omnath can deal one damage and kill the Catilda. All right, so we're back playing on curve again. Uh, as far as activated abilities go, I'm trying to think if there's more double whites or double blues. I don't think there's much difference either way. I'm certainly just going to go for another five here. And we get Perforos Bronze Blooded. But a red creature artifact, yeah, that's not a thing. It is, however... Basically a permanent your creatures have haste, which is nice, and it's not going anywhere, so everything that I produce now gives me haste. So Omnath is a um, potentially problematic one, because once you get to uh, eight or more lands, then they get to start drawing cards from their land drops, and that's uh, card advantage is a big thing as well. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to six drops. And just hope for, like... Yep. Pretty much exactly that, I would say. Some big old creatures. In fact, I'm going to get in with the human tokens. I'll leave the Mangara back, because it's a lifelinker that can block. And also, if they attack back, then I get to draw a card that way. So trade some 1-1s one off for a 2-2 two two and a 3-3. Three three. Start producing some more 3-3s three in the air. And this game is over. 
It's gotta be. I mean, maybe they've got a, like a mass bounce creature they could hit here. Fight a creature you don't control. So they can't really hit the Archon, because Archon's a 4-5. Yeah, Archon's kind of like a very rude creature, isn't it? Because under no circumstances is our opponent able to get a fighting creature that can kill the Archon. So they need kind of like a, a Chupacabra that says enters and destroys a creature or something. Which is a few of them. Um, and there's also things like Omnath that deal damage equal to things which could maybe hit the Archon here. But yeah, that's uh, that was a pretty, pretty nice board state. Let's see if we get 20 gems or if I get a rare. I would love a rare. I would always like a rare. The 20 gems adds up, but for the most part, it's kind of useless. And we played six lands that game. Look at that. Close to my dailies. We have a rare. A Dollhouse of Horrors. Actually, not that bad. Um... Uh, it's not a terribly playable card, but it is a rare in a set that I'm trying to complete right now. So that's one less pack I have to open. That's a thousand gold right there. So I'm pretty happy with that. On to the next one. All right, we're in and we're on the draw. This hand. Has some mana in it. I suppose we'll keep it. If you make me. How many times can I make that joke? Let's find out, shall we? Depends on how many games we have today. <laughs> is our opponent playing the game? Opponent could have the same problem I have, which is when I start games up, my game crashes. But nope. They're here. They've arrived. Alright, so forest and go. Always skip our one drops, play our two drops. Decide from there where we want to go. Sometimes I skip three, sometimes I don't. It typically depends. I'm actually going to get rid of an island here. This double greens, an activated combo. Sacrifice a creature, each opponent gains one life, new gain. Loses one life, new gain one life. Pretty crappy, to be honest. Ugh. Three mana, two, three. Could be worse, I suppose. So I'm gonna play my island. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go for my three drops. I like to I like to feel it out. That was terrible. Three mana, two, two. I like to feel it out based on my two drops, whether or not I go for a three drop. If this one's really bad on two, then I like to go for a three, because otherwise your opponents start playing big threats and Pushing through damage while you're deciding not to do anything. Ends the battlefield if it's kicked, it gains haste. Well, it's a 4 mana 4 3, which is not terrible. And again, I kind of feel like I have to keep up with my opponent's board state a little bit here. As much as they are kind of not attacking me, I suppose. Maybe it's not that bad. Yeah, let's get rid of one of the mountains. Vigilance and lifelink. Okay. That probably means I'm going to skip five drops. I don't have a planes in play. Did I discard one? No, I just haven't had one. All right, that was a tutor card for a planeswalker deck card. Yep. Well, hey, look at that. Yeah, I think I'm just going to Vigilance and Lifelink attack here. Reason to skip a number is so that you can go a little bit higher on your mana values down the line. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do that if you get mana docks, though. Yeah, I'm going to say skip five so I can get a little bit higher. More cards in hand means you can go higher mana value. It's dealt damage, deals puts one one counter on each other creature you control. Alright, I'm never blocking that ever. Let's see if they want to get aggressive here. Yeah, I didn't think so. What if I decided just to skip six as well? I think that's probably a bad idea. Yeah, it's got to be a bad idea. Let's go sixes. The reason to do it would be so I can get another uh, Pegasus hit him, maybe. And again, go a little bit higher, but yeah, I mean, I'm regretting it now. Let's hit you for two. 
That is a 6 mana 6-5 six with actually no text box. This has been a, a full game of text boxless cards today. Can't be blocked with creatures with power 2 or less, so I can't block that 7-7 seven seven right now. So let's see if I can match it. Let's go down the forest. We've got double green now. Okay, that's not bad. Hit you for two. So if it's dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. So if they attack in, they're going to lose their Great Worm or whatever they decide to attack in with. And then they're going to lose either another creature or another land. And losing lands in this format is not a good thing. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> that's not good. Not good at all. So they want to push in. I don't think they want to push in, personally. Yeah, Barbarigmos, you might be wondering where this card came from. Uh, Wizards likes to add in occasionally cards from uh, other sets that aren't on Arena just to fill out the mana value, or the, the value of a mana cost, so... If there isn't enough 11s, they add in 11s and things like that. Um, let's go 8 drops. 6, 7, 8. Go down the mountain. Come on, good card. When you cast a spell, return a permanent to its owner's hand. I mean, it's a flying 5-5, five, five, which has value. But it uh, also just doesn't have a text box. So now I can do 9s, but not go any higher. Opponent decides to dump their land rather than using Bob Rigmus's, uh ability there. I think I'm inclined to agree with that decision. Uh, they can trade up with Razaketh here, paying two and sacking another creature. So some of the creatures that are never going to get in, they can grab a land. So they can draw a card by trading bad creatures off, which is not great for me. I don't know what good stuff's on 9, if I'm being honest. But... Doesn't hurt to take a little peek, see? Creatures can't attack you. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Alright. So I am uh, unable to be attacked. That's going to hold back the Bobberigmos for a little while. Legend rules there, Razaketh. And decides it's not worth it. Yeah, I mean, short of them getting to 9 and getting their own arc on, thus um, destroying our chances of attacking each other until we get a uh, destroy creature effect. There's not really much you can do against that card. But uh, yeah, I think they really want to go for their own 9s. I think 9 also has a card that destroys permanents. You could also go for like 7s and go for Meteor Golem. Because uh, seven's kind of a low mana value creature count um, mana cost. It's really hard to describe that without sounding very word soupish. But um, yeah, you're really looking for cards that can destroy the Archon. Uh, there is a good number that I think is not seven that is suitable for killing Archons. And it might just be nine as well. I seem to remember that being the case. But yeah, it's, it's basically going to come down to us... Um, Firing off our spells until I've got a critical mass that can just kill our opponent with an all attack. Because uh, they can still block, they just can't attack. So uh, let's leave the match and see what our next card is. Is it going to be gems? Is it going to be a rare I wanted? Let's see. I kind of want it to be an alchemy card. I don't know if that's even possible. Not sure how the, uh, the ICRs work with alchemy cards. It is a rare I do not have. And a Ruth, another Crimson Vow card. All right, that's pretty good. Again, that's another thousand gold uh, for a card that I was probably going to open at some point. It's not terribly playable, but it could be in the future. Uh, it's very uh, storm-like. There's a uh, combo potential for this, but yeah. If it didn't say if you would draw a card, if it would say if you would draw a card except for the first one you draw each turn, then this would probably see some play in Brawl, but because it just shuts down your draw altogether... It's probably why you don't see it that much. But uh, either way, let's see if we can get our third win.
Alrighty, let's go, shall we? I always like to lead on the turn one forest. For no particular reason other than it uh, is the colour of mana dorks and therefore, you know, gives me a little bit of hope that this two drop will be a mana dork. Come on, mana dork. Whenever you draw your second card, put a counter on Fairy Vandal. That could have a text box. It's not terribly likely, but it could. Having it be a flyer is also kind of good. Uh, that is a 2-1 with first strike. So I want to get aggressive here, being on the play. So I think I'm going to try for a 3-drop that can block our opponent's creature. Go down the island. Other merfolk get plus 1, plus 1. I mean, it could have text again, but probably unlikely. So not quite hitting the blocker here. They get... Oh no. That's not a good one. I think Oren Reef Ooze has to attack though in order to give the counter to their creature. So that we've got that going for us at the very least. Uh, I think I'm just going to play up the curve here until I hit something good. And then maybe slow my pace a bit. If he casts a spell that targets this, that's just got no text box. Alright, so in order to push through this 4-4, four four, they're going to have to either hit a 4-drop here that does something about it, or they're going to have to attack him with the ooze. Alright. 2-2 two two with ward. 5-color Tron enabled. I'm going to go for one 5-drop, and then I might skip my 6s, maybe. Undecided. Whenever it dies, search your library for a creature card. Doesn't do anything. Okay. <laughs> We've basically... The entire way up the curve. Just got creatures without text boxes. On both of our sides as well. Like, mine have trample and flying and... Oh look, this one has vigilance in its text box. Yeah, I I'm gonna keep going until I hit a card with the text box, I think. Come on, card that does something. <laughs> Alright. Um, can I attack in with my 5-4? I suppose I can. Any double block's gonna... be a 2 for one for us. Lovely. 2 for ones are great in this format. I could search my library all day. I probably won't find out. So yeah, other than just like evergreen keywords, this game has gone entirely without... Oh, it explores! Wow. Explore is just draw a card in this format. It's very powerful. Uh, three, six, seven. I'm going to do sevens. Eights and nines are better, but dinosaurs get a little bit of a buff. Um, so, three, four, five, six, seven. I can attack him with you. Can't attack him with you. Can attack him with you. Look at that. Beautiful. I'll take it. So first strike does its thing, then I murder in a 3-4-1 fashion. And suddenly, short of our opponent mass bouncing this board, this game's probably over, because you really don't want to be 2 4 yourself in this format. They did draw an extra card with the Explore, though, so they kind of got their value that way. Uh, each opponent discards a card on your end step, so now I am basically banned from holding cards in my hand, so let's just go for another 7. What number of spells in lock on? He's on seven, right? Hornet Queen. GG opponent. GG. So they can do some profit blocks. I'm pretty sure if I just all attack for the rest of the game here, I'm going to win. I can also just start creating dinosaurs. Four, five with flying and no text box. <laughs> 
So yeah, we got, um, I think like three creatures that entire game that actually did something outside of just turning up. We had one explore, we had one end step each opponent discards, and we had create some insects. You can kind of make an argument that this has a, a thing, a text box, but... Uh, yeah, six mana for a three three with trample is uh, is not really a text box, but uh, yeah, what a wild game! What a wild game indeed. Well, we've got our three wins. I'm probably going to go for one more win. It allows me to do my dailies. Got to go to four wins, but I do get my cosmetic. Let's hope it's not just a a motion sickness card style. It has been for the past couple of times, and why stop now? You can get sleeves with this. Um, Thing. I think you can also get avatars. I don't know if you can get basic land arts. That would be really nice if I can get some Bob Ross arts. Mm. Chef's kiss. But uh, yeah, it's going to be mostly card styles because that makes up the bulk of uh, of wizards cosmetics to choose from, which is a shame. But uh, yeah, let's keep going. Alrighty, looks like we're on the draw. What say you, Spirit Bum? Leads with a swamp. Did they do the one drop? Yeah, our opponent has played Momia before. You can tell who doesn't play Momia or who doesn't care about it by uh, their usage of the turn one Momia emblem. Ooh, are they... They're skipping twos. I mean, it has its value, but I think that the potential upsides of doing twos every time does outweigh the downside. I mean, we got a 1-3 here, so the downside's definitely there, but... Yeah, if we'd have got a mana dock there, we'd be ahead of our opponent now. So I think it's kind of worth trying. 1-3 that scries. And we have a reach spider, so... No issue there. I think because this is a stalled out board state, I'm going to skip my threes. Life total is a resource. You can obviously take a little bit of damage, but... It's hard to know whether or not you'll get that life back since, you know, this game is entirely random. So, you got to be a little bit more cautious about taking unnecessary damage. A Gonti. You can't play lands, right? Look at that card. For as long as it remains exiled, you may spend mana as a mana to cast that spell. Yeah, so you can't cast lands. So our opponent with their 2 3 isn't going to get better very far. I'm going to skip my 4s as well. We can take one, uh, 2 points of damage here. That's fine. This is just going to allow me to get ahead of the curve a little bit. So they'll play the bigger creatures first, but I'll play the bigger creatures in the end, short of them, you know, drawing a card and making me regret this decision. So, they're gonna go for fives. You may sack a land and draw a card, not a good idea. And they get in. Take two. Right, I am officially back on the let's play cards train because they have a 4-4 here and they are already attacking me for two a turn, so I would like that to stop. Just about anything I can get here I think would be good enough. A 7-3. I mean, could be worse, right? We'll definitely block this uh, Anarid. Is this, a, is this actually an arena, as in a playable thing? I don't remember it, but it is in uh, Modern Horizons, which is a set that is partially added to this fort. This oh, that's fine. That'll never get activated. There's an infinite combo with this card, but uh, yeah, without the without the green pips, it ain't a thing. So block here, block here. Pretty confident I'll find an answer to this uh, elemental. Let's go double green. Five, six. Drop a mountain, I guess. 
Well... It's not an answer, really, but it's a blocker and it gained us 5 life, which has undone a lot of the Gonti damage we've seen up until this point. All of the Gonti damage, really. We're at 21 now. So that did work out for us. Affinity for artifacts. 7 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Hate to see it. So we can block here, we can block here. I think it's better to block the elemental than to kill the Gonti and lose our 3-6. Uh, let's go with double black. Three, six, seven. Let's hope for no affinity for artifacts creature of our own. We get an eight, five. All creatures able to block it do so. When it dies, draw three cards. That's kind of huge. So not only can we profitably block some of their bigger creatures here, we can also trade off with their biggest. Drawing three cards and then we could probably work our way all the way up to ten drops and get some Ulamogs in here and all of that's Oh. Ooh. <laughs> that's, um, that's a lot of damage. So... We're gonna kill you. Just gonna block here and then... Just block as much damage as possible, I guess. It's a shame this is Death Touch, otherwise it would be nice to block it. Yeah, that ain't, isn't great for us. I have a hard time seeing how we win now. Because one creature presumably won't deal with this board state. Um, four, eight... Need a mass bouncing creature. I don't even know if that exists in eight. You could also get uh, Sarah's Emissary, right, on eight. I think it's an eight mana creature. And name name creature with it. Yeah, that's not going to be good enough. Yeah, or is it a seven drop? I think it might be a seven drop we should have maybe gone for. Yeah, if we name creatures and get protection from them, then that's the end of this one. We could also do... If we had 9 mana, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, next turn we could have maybe tried for the Archon that can stop our opponent from attacking us. So yeah, just a turn too late there. That that end raise foreigner was kind of brutal. Kind of brutal. Alright, let's go for another game. Alright, land drop. Say go. Opponent skips theirs as well. We're going to go for two drops as is tradition. Uh, dump the colors we already have. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, deals one damage to each opponent. It's not text boxless, but it's pretty bad. Opponent is going to go for their two drops. They get a 2 2 with persist could be worse, although I think this doesn't come back because it's a token. I'm going to skip my three drops. I think because this doesn't go to the graveyard, because everything is a token that Momia produces, then it doesn't come back with its minus one, minus one counter on it. Two, three with Menace. You can attack and waste my time if you want. There's really no need to. Alright. Opponent values my time, at least to a certain extent. Alright. Let's go... Drop the swab. It attacks. Hang on. Let me just uh, skip turn. When it attacks, you may change the base power and toughness of target human you control to this one until the end of the turn. Okay. It's just a 4-4, four, four, basically. I mean... Target creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it gains Trample and Lifelink. As long as you put one armor up, counters on a creature this turn, the Paladin has Trample and Lifelink. So if they get a creature that produces tokens, or counters, sorry, then that'll be good. Uh, we've got every color now. Let's go down the white. 
When it ETBs, exile a historic permanent you control. Yep, not good. We need some more creatures with text boxes. Gain's a bit alive. And is otherwise a pretty reasonable threat. They could attack him for 4 here and bet that I don't get a creature that can block this 5-4. I could also just double block with my 1-3 and 3-3, three, three, which is also pretty good. I'm not sure they really consider the fact that this creature can only kill 1. So I'm still... I traded a 3-3 three, three for a 4-4 four, four there. A 4-4 four, four that had a text box. Let's go sixes. Yeah. Has an evergreen keyword. It's a pretty reasonable body otherwise. Could be worse. So am I skipping an activation next turn? That's extremely good. Six mana, eight, eight trample. I guess I am not skipping my turn next turn. Gonna go for some 7 drops. Really? Yeah, let's do 7s. Oops. That's a good one. Other creatures with flying have it indestructible. Uh, there's no good attacks here. So I won't be blocking, um, but I will be attacking back. So they're going to hit me for 8. I'm going to gain 7 and hit them for 7. So pretty decent trade for me. Let's hope they don't get a flyer here. Oh, they've got something that names. Yeah. I was going to say... Protection from creatures. I need exactly the same. Otherwise, I'm going to lose. So let's see if we hit it. Nope. Alright, yeah. Our creatures are unable to block, unable to deal damage, and that will be game over. Next game. Alrighty, land go. Let's see what our opponent's up to. What would you like to play? Land go. Alright. We're gonna go land two drop. Gonna get Pay three life, flip a coin. If you win the flip, gain six life. I'm gonna gamble that for the entire game. Cause I'm gonna live on the edge. If you're, if you're not going to embrace the random, then there's no real point in playing, Momia. Other than getting your dailies. Uh, I'm going to attempt to get a 3-3 that can block this 3-1. A 2-3 with reach. You get lifelink and you become a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, it could be worse. Can I do this anytime? I can. Alright, we're going to be flipping coins for the entire game up until the point where I die. Them's the rules. Unless I know for a fact that it would kill me. That would also be an exception. So let's see if they exert and make themselves a 4-4. Four, four. Looks like they do. Sure. Flip my coin. I lose 3 life. Good flip. We're at 13. Uh, we're going to need some uh, cards to stop us dying. So let's go for a 4 drop. Come on, life gain. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. I think I'll keep my reach creature rather than trading it with a 3-2 with no text box. Maybe even save myself some life by blocking with the coin flipper. Flipping the coin. See if we if we break even, because we are at break e Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, I'm going to save myself a little bit of life here. 
Come on, heads. Yay! All right. We lost nothing. Five drops, please. I want to make sure Delina never wants to get in for an attack here, because that would be bad. A 3-4 with Scry 1 on it. Sure. Um, I can get in here. I don't think I'm going to attempt to block the initiate. This could go very wrong for me, though. Oh, it's a May. I was going to be so happy for a moment there. So I believe um, you can do Delina here, and if you select the Initiate, you can declare it exerting as it attacks, I believe. I think that's how that works. Well, we don't get to... Oh, they went for Delina as a copy. All right, fair enough. Uh, block there and then take a little bit more damage. Loses the other Delina. I was expecting that to be more spectacular than it ended up being, but here we are. Uh, we're going to go six drops here. I think I'm just going to settle for sevens in this game. That is a six seven. That is lovely. Let's get in with you. Be happy to finally start blocking the 4 4 that attacks me every other turn. Okay. Um, no blocks. At least it has no text box. Right. Sevens, please. Come on, Sarah's emissary. No, a 4-4. Four, four. It is a 4-4 four, four that blocks Olivia, so I'm allowed to attack in here. Uh, I could also get in with you, I suppose. Since this block is available to me. Although, maybe now that the initiate can exert again, I should just not be greedy and do that. Dragons get plus one, plus zero, oh, as long as I hold open two mana. It's very rarely correct to uh, hold up and said mana. And if they get an emissary at any point here, I lose the game. Uh, that's gonna kill me if I'm not careful. Deals combat damage to a player, create that many treasure tokens. Sevens. It becomes blocked by a creature, drain for two. So yeah, I'm holding back now. Because if this uh, old Norbone gets in at any point, they can start doing 10s for Ulamog, and then at that point, I think I'm pretty much just dead. So I really just need to keep hitting 7s until I hit a Sarah's Emissary, I think. 8-4 with Trample. And I'll trade off wherever our opponent deems necessary. If they make me 7... Ooh, that was a good one. Um, is it correct to attack him with my ground and pounding 8-6 here? I think I could make an exception for that. Yep, we get a little, dry, a little drain there. We get rid of a trampler. I'd say that's a good deal. All things considered. I think my ground team's enough to deal with what our opponent's got there. That would normally be a very bad 7 for me, but because it needs a cast trigger to work, no concern there. What do we get? A 5-4 with exile all attacking creatures. So settle the wreckage, but worse. Uh, I'm going to say no attacks. We are gaining life every single time something big enters as well, since the uh, Verdant Sun's avatar is sticking around. So being back up at 17 is also very nice here. Oh, Targa takes us back down to 10. Is that how that works? Yeah. Well, let's go back up to... Whatever this reveals. 
Ah, we got a platinum angel. We can't lose. That's good. <laughs> that that complicates things for our opponent. So if they attack us, we just don't block and we attack them back. Slin Voda, only good with a kick. What a game. Seven. Come on, Sarah's Emissary. What did we get? Thundering Spine back. Pumps up our... Uh, do debts there, but uh, still not good enough. We're up at 19. Eight four for them. They should really be doing sevens. Because I'm digging for the you can no longer block me card. Cultivate a Colossus. That would have been so good if I had a card in my hand. Power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. When it enters the battlefield, you put a land from your hand onto the battlefield and then draw a card and repeat the process. Well, actually, would that kill me? You may put a land from... Yeah, so it wouldn't kill me. It would just make me uh, a trampling creature the size of the rest of the cards in my deck. That's pretty good. I'll take that. <laughs> so we can play lands now and still keep making seven drops. So we can go straight up to Ulamog Manor. Um, I think Ulamog's about the best thing that you could aim for in this uh, particular situation. So yeah, it's pretty good. Now we've got the Cultivate Colossus as well. And if we ever hit that seven again and get the other Cultivate Colossus, then we'll make this uh, very, very large. Does it only care about the number of lands you control? Yes, it does. So we can only get another like 28 uh, counters, oh, 28 plus one plus ones on the uh, Cultivate Colossus, which, you know, is definitely enough. And uh, it's a plant beast, so not a dinosaur. But yeah, pretty good. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. And if you have, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Maybe like this in the future. I always like to return to Momia from time to time. It's a nice little bit of fun. And we like to have a little bit of fun on this channel. So if you like having fun, subscribe because there's plenty of it to be had over here. But yeah, take care, guys, and have a wonderful rest of your day.